when the show was picked up for season two, did you always know it would be this anthology and pick up with a new mystery? Or were there any conversations about picking up the loose threads from the big twist at the end of season one? That's a good question. Yes, we took the time to make sure we were making the right decision of making this anthology. We didn't just jump into that idea. We definitely uh, gathered a writer's room and talked it out. Like, what would it look like to continue the story and with who and where? And we sort of all realized we hit lightning in a bottle. We sort of told that story and the way to continue forward what the show can do again with a new story is keep the three timelines, keep the dual perspectives and keep it fresh every season, mm -hmm. you know? And that was, but we did consider it. We did go down the line, but we felt it was the best way to continue forward with this one. I definitely agreed with that. And one of the central mysteries that revolves around the release of a, a sex tape with the season set just a few years after the Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee scandal. I wanna know, did any real events influence the season's plot? Well, I think it was the Pam and Tommy. Yeah. It was the time of the sex, you know, that was, we being that we're in the late 90s, mm -hmm. you know, and toxic masculinity and those things that were in the culture at the time, we definitely played into what was happening then. Mm -hmm. Now I wanna know, Jessica, a lot of the Y2K trends on the show, including what, a knit crop top, all that <laughs> butterfly clips that I used to love to put in my hair, and coming <laughs> back into fashion, which we love. Um, what were your favorite and maybe your least favorite looks from the 90s? From the 90s. You know, we have photos, so you better, better come <laughs> to Oh, trust me, I know. Oh, I know, I know, and I've, I've seen them all, and I'm trying to love, I'm just loving myself through it. I am. <laughs> I, okay, I think my favorite vibe was, was like the short crop top with the, the low hanging baggy jean. Kind of like that Gwen Stefani vibe. Or, yes. the, or the, or the, um, like this, uh, like the TLC vibe. That was that was cool. I felt like that was just like such a cool vibe. I don't know if I ever actually was cool enough and wore it, <laughs> but in my mind, that's what I looked like. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think it was the reality. Uh -huh. but I, I like that look. I think we we always we always thought that you looked pretty cool. What were your least favorite looks from the '90s that, that maybe are coming making their comeback and you're like, oh my god, please no, keep it there, keep it there. Oh. I know one you had. Tell me. The tan line. Oh. You would show the tan line. The tan line yes. and the crop, the, the, the tube, the, the tube, tube top. top. Oh. With mm -hmm. like an intense tan line. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. awful. Yeah. I <laughs> rocked that for sure. You can look that one up. You can look that one up. <laughs> That is so funny. Well, at least we learn from our mistakes, right? Our fashion faux pas. What, what do you guys think true crime, what do you think it is about true crime that fascinates people so much, especially, um, you know, I think it's really taken a, a toll in the past few years. People are binging this as if it's a nighttime story. I don't know. I just think it's like a human experience or a, it's the human experience to be curious about why people do the things that they do. Like why, why, how do human beings get into these really, really sticky pickles <laughs> and make these really crazy decisions? I think that's what I'm always interested in. Yeah, because it's, Candy, remember Candy? We saw oh you yeah. in Candy. She's fascinating, right? That's a fascinating story to me and how the culture at the time, you know, in her community, and because she was so well loved, they believed her, you know? And I, I still to this day don't know what the truth is there. But um, yeah, that's a perfect, a perfect point. I, I'm so curious and I think, I think I'm always right on the verge of like, could that be me? Could I do, could I make a, a really crazy decision like like these things? And I, I think we're all capable of everything, you know, whether being, you know, good or bad or whatever it is, like we're capable. So there's that kind of endless fascination about those human moments where you just get stuck and you do something, you react, you know? And Michelle, I imagine that's why, that also is why you were drawn to this project as well, that fascination. Oh, for sure. I mean, we're both true crime junkies, whether it's podcasts mm -hmm. or new, I mean, it's some of the stuff you can't script, right? You're like, people are actually doing these things, whatever it is.
Um, yeah, we're, it's just, it's, it's intriguing to us to sort of dive into, can we find out the truth of the story too? I'm curious, Jessica, um, do you think that you'll let your sons watch this when they grow up? <laughs> uh, yeah, when they grow up. Yes. I, I told them if he's, I told my oldest, that you can't watch candy. You, you don't do that. But cruel summer. Yes. Yes. I think, I think that, that this is a perfect show for them when they grow up. You said when they grow up, but I'm curious while working on something like candy, how did you not take that darkness home and make sure that you brought your son's like levity when you went home instead of darkness? Because that was a really, that was a tough show. It was a tough, that was real. I have to come home and be a mom to these kids. So I leave it at work. That's, I, I, I can do that well. That's something that I've worked on for myself and I, I really want to be able to have that work-life separation. And um, my kids make make my life totally insane and, and so fun and full of love. So that darkness doesn't have any place for me at home and I leave it at work. I'm curious, Michelle, if there were to be a season three, what would you want to see it be about this time around? Oh, that's a good question. A lot has to do sort of with what time period, if we're going back into the early 90s or later into the 2000s, mm -hmm. because we do like the show to speak to what's happening at that, what was happening at that, that time. Sort of pulled from the headlines. That's, yeah. So it's hard to say, um, well, we're hoping for a season three. So if people show up for season two, Freeform will have no choice, but to <laughs> season three. Come on, people, <laughs> show up, please.